Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined here by the illustrious cast and crew here out in Studio B, a.k.a. The Man Cave. We're all in here uh, making big clouds of smoke uh, with the air conditioner. We'll see how the uh, the ventilation goes. <laughs> we may we may get into a jam where we can't see each other, but uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Of course, sitting across from me is Mr. Tim Margarini. Welcome, Tim. Hola. How's everybody doing? I'm doing good now that we have the Stogies feed where we want it. I almost, think, yeah, I think we're we, almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost we we got to some... figure out that tag cloud. That's thing. right. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. So for those of you, when you go to the show notes, um, you can go now where Paul and Tim have been smoking. You click that, and it goes to a section of our blog that gets updated automatically. There's what the magic of a tag cloud where you can see the ratings of all the sticks and stuff. So we're really ramping that up. I'm really excited about yeah. the way that's turning out. Cleaning it up. I'm I like, think. why didn't we do this sooner? Uh, <laughs> so, I, yeah. Yeah. You learn as you go. Of course, in the house is Stoke. Boogie Santa. Good evening. Yes. And Mark Jr. is here. What up? So we are smoking the little monsters. So, Tim, why don't we go around and talk about what each of us are smoking and uh, kind of uh, our first initial thoughts about maybe uh, the first few puffs and whatnot. Yeah, sure. So we all grabbed a different stick from the box, um, as many of you may know or may not know. The Tat Little Mosses, there's five different sticks in the box. Um, I am smoking the Mini Mum, which is five and three quarter by 42. Um, sports a Nicaraguan sun grown Criollo, Criollo. Criollo wrapper. Um, That's just, a tough one. We'll give you that. That's a tough one. Yeah, I've got it right before. But not tonight. <laughs> um, we need to drink more. Yeah, that's the problem. We haven't opened the scotch yet. That's right. Uh, opened up with a big blast of pepper, so we'll see where it goes. Um, that's about what I've gotten off the first quarter of an inch is a lot of pepper. Um, not in a bad way, though. Good. Nice. Um, so we'll see what happens. Over to you, Stogie Santa. I'm smoking a little drac. Uh, just lit this up right away, and Tim, I'm getting the same thing that you're getting. I got a big blast of black pepper. Uh, I have off this also a strange, a strange enough, I have a, a little bit of sweetness and a cinnamon background. That's, cinnamon, huh? That's just me. I don't know. It, it's, it's different. Really, really different. And what we're going to do, uh, so listeners know what's going on, I have the original Drac on the Monster Series right here, and we're going to get this going in between this. Just to compare the Mini and the regular. You know, the last time I passed around something that was in a cigar wrapper, it necessarily was not tobacco. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you tricking us, Stogie <laughs> Santa? <laughs> Am I going to have to sleep on Paul's couch again? <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just want to see, there's the difference between the two cigars. Significant size difference. Oh, uh, it, and, yeah. and you can, you know, even to the nose, you can it, it age what it does. Yeah. It, it, it was strange. Like I said, that black pepper right out of the box, it just banged right into me. Well, that's a, that's a good point. Point, uh, Stogie Santa, that the tobacco used in all of these series, great, because these are based on Halloween series that came out three, Previously. four, yeah, exactly. three, four, five, or whatever, how many years ago when these sticks first came out. It's the same crop. It's not from the same year as the no. original. So your drac is has much older tobacco than the little drac. Absolutely. But it's from the same crop, same, same tobacco. Crop. Just the wrapper years, looks yeah. identical. Oh, I mean, yeah, it really does. Same color, same veins. Oh, everything. Yeah. Uh, I mean... If you just break it down and take a look at it like this, you I'm not sure they can see that on the camera. Well, there you go. Yeah, so, I hold, mean. hold them up a little higher. Yeah, sure. there you go. There. Okay. Oh, there you go. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Now, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm the only one that smoked all of these so far, right? I believe so. This, this is, is the first time I've all uh, of cracked them. Yeah. Those. yeah. Okay, you smoked a few Mark Jr. Right? This is my third. Yeah. One so, what are you smoking now, uh, Mr. Mark Jr.? The baby face. Um, it is the smaller version of the face, which was the 2010 monster release. Correct. Yes. Monster number three. Yes. Sports a San Andreas Mexican wrapper. Right. And it's a four oh. and three eighths by 50. Correct. Which is substantially smaller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, than the face. The face was a gargantuan cigar. Yes. Um, well, it is it is a gargantuan cigar. As we have some. <laughs> That's how his... Mark Jr. and I met. <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> that Speak is for true. yourself. It's I smoked my last one yeah, last yeah. week. So. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Sorry to hear about that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Notice wish, the, wish we could was, help you out with that. There was no offer to help a fellow brother out there. That's all right. It's all cool. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, initially, though, it's it, it tastes like a very different cigar. Actually, the baby face does than that. It's, I thought it had a lot more pepper, um, a spice. The small one. Yeah. Okay, I did not get that right off the initial light. Okay. Hopefully, it builds up a little bit because I do remember that from the the original the original face. Yeah. A lot of pepper. I did get a a very nice leathery type opening out okay. of this cigar, which I don't remember picking up off the other one, but. Interesting. Nope. I, this See where one it goes. Is at five by forty-eight, by the way, the low drag. Nice. Excuse me. Yeah. And the uh, baby face is four and three eighths by fifty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm smoking the Frank Junior, which is a five and five eighths by uh, forty-four. Mm-hmm. Hold it up for the cameras there. This is really good. I have to say, I'm like a little it's ways awesome, into man. the first third. Yeah, I, I, it's presenting a flavor that's uh, very much like a almost a tobacco sweetness, probably a, yeah. a broadleaf kind of sweetness. That yeah. uh, that bet you that sweetness is coming from that wrapper. Very it does very have good. A broadleaf wrapper. Okay, now I just seem everyone except for Mark has all said we had that black pepper right up the front. Did everyone get that so far? I did. Yeah, I did. Mark. I did not. No. I did not. No, I didn't get. No, I didn't okay, get any pepper at the front. Yeah. I I did not get any pepper on that. I didn't. Yeah, this was very smooth front. from the first time yeah. I. No, I, I was gonna say that. That'd yeah, be interesting. If you did, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll leave my assessment of that for the end. But sure, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll go. I'm really enjoying this. It's a good choice. I'll just say that. Yeah, it's too bad you couldn't buy full boxes of the ones that you like the best. Ah, uh, intense. That's yes. the part of the, the the beauty of his marketing scheme. Is you got to buy? <laughs> you want more? You're you got to buy. buy more. <laughs> this is why people are buying ten boxes online. You know. <laughs> oh, and then just What's selling the ones. Yeah, yeah. trading and selling the ones yeah. they don't. Well, want. Well, you got to right. find someone that has the opposite tastes uh, that you do, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So nice. these retail for seventy five dollars a box. For those who don't know, again, ten cigars, two of each in each box. Mm-hmm. There's one additional that we're not haven't <clears> talked about yet, and that's the Wolfie. Right. Based yes. On last year's Halloween release, um, mm-hmm. that has an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, which you said kind of well sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that's my assessment. Um, it, it didn't suck. Uh, it, was, it was just boring. Boring. That's underwhelming. Saying. From what I, yeah. I, I that's that a I, good word. Yeah, I didn't smoke. I'm not saying that, but a couple of my friends yeah. and I didn't. I didn't have to speak to you about this yet, but they were weren't overly. They're all my my list for what I've smoked this week. Um, I would say it's a, a smoke I would smoke around the yard while I'm not paying attention to it. Um, really? Yeah. It's it's not bad. It's just not great. Um, so. mm. Mm, interesting. Anyways, I digress. Well, what do you... Uh, so that uh, rounds out the little monsters. Um, there's pictures in the show notes of the boxes. Oh, and they came when they come with the cards. We were talking about the cards here just before the show. Do we have the box? They come, yeah, they special. come with the little the little cards. Only the first 5,000 boxes come with mm-hmm. cards in them. So really cool uh, characters card, on the inside of the box. Right. <laughs> people are... People are going crazy over the cards, all that stuff. Comes Wait a second. The, you only paid $69 a box? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, I bought mine from the wrong place. You did. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the next, just before we move on to the Stogies of the Week, the next release, the, uh, no, there's going to be more of these boxes. Well, it's not really a another release. release. It's a another, another run shipment. Of, yeah, yep. right. Because it, this seemed to get out in, you know, from Miami. Some boxes got released in Miami, and somebody in North Carolina got them, and someone didn't get them there. There's a lot of hooting and hollering about how they would distribute it. But, you know, Pete's doing the best he can do, and along with Andy. Uh, uh, it, it just we're going to get another shipment of them. How many? I don't know. It's going to be up to. No, Andy. these will be the same box, but just more have cards in them. That's Is that the, okay, okay. Yeah. So, who cares about the cards? I can't smoke them. <clears throat> Gave mine to my seven-year-old. Yeah. Well, you he could smoke. It was them. I don't think they'd be very good. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it, you wouldn't get that black pepper taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of cardboard. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll talk about a cigar that we got uh, a lot of <laughs> cardboard. One of those, huh? I got, I got, it was a cardboard cigar. Uh, so let's move on to the Stogies of the Week. Uh, let's see. I'll uh, I'll go first with a mutual stick that uh, both Tim and I smoke. This is the Tatuaje Mexican Project Robusto. See, I'll spare you from having to say Tatuaje. Uh, I got about eight of them in my list this week. Oh, so okay. No <laughs> I'm not me. sparing you anything. Uh, I had a nice, uh, kind of like a Tatuaje flavor. I... I I, I hate to say that because it's not really descriptive of a flavor, but there is this certain kind of profile of flavors that I think you get from a lot of the Tatawahe mm-hmm. blends. And it, it certainly had that in, in a very basic form, if that makes any sense. Um, it was very strong on the finish. I enjoyed it. I'd buy more. Um, 
If you're looking at the picture, yes, I also need to clean the dirt from my fingernail. Um, <laughs> so. But uh, I, I, you also explained there was two releases on those. Correct. Yes. Right. And, Northeast and Florida. And, Florida. And, and explain which one was which, Tim, if you don't mind. So the Robusto is the Florida release. Um, and we got to send props to Big Al because he gifted us I these. was wondering where this came from. I thought it came from Big Al. Yeah. He bought a box. Um, he was nice enough to gift me a few, which I gift, then in turn gifted you one, Paul. Um, the Toro, Toro, which is the larger of the two, is the Northeast release. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there was only three to 400 boxes of each release. Correct. Um, Again, this is a project. That's yeah, it it's an experiment. Um, I said great, rich flavors, a lot of like that. I'm not going to say chewy, but rustic flavors you would get from it a was, Mexican wrapper. It was very rich. Yeah. Would, yes. That's a good uh, word to describe it. Now, the toll, I thought, was a little flat in the last third. Oh, I, 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 you're reading my mind here because what I, I mean, as soon as you said it came on strong yeah. with the, with the uh, Robusto at the end, I found with the Toro, the last third was, I didn't yeah, care for it. Yeah, yeah. I smoked I three mean, of them. In it is, but the yeah, me too. I did the same thing. I did three, and I said, that's enough for me. No, I thought the I Robusto was better. Okay. And I don't yeah. see a big aging change on this Toro. I, I mean... My experience, I just feel that this cigar is a good, solid cigar. It is what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's good smoke. I thought, I mean, it's, typical it's like beer. seven and change or? Seven and a quarter. Yeah. Well, with the Robusto might be different pricing than the Toro, right? right? And same with the Toro. Now, the listeners got to understand that we're going on a, 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 our tax of 50 cents a stick. Mm -hmm. So, and each and every state is a little bit different. Yep. So, I mean, I rated it as a five. What do you say, Paul? Uh, I, I put Fiverr as well. Yeah. Now, is that on the Robusto you're saying? Yes. Yeah, the Robusto yeah. is definitely a Fiverr. And I'm, I'm pushing the limits. Uh, I call it an angler on, 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 the, uh, on the Toro. Yeah, if that flavor had stayed through that last third, yeah. it would definitely be a Fiverr. Right. Oh, but, okay. You were on the same page. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. I would say it's a grab one or two on the Toro. Right. Uh, reach for the Robustos if you can get them still. Um, Let me ask you this. On the Robusto, did you get a really strong barnyard smell out of the wrapper when you... You know, I didn't notice. I know what you're talking about, Mike. Because the Toro, ha like, reeked of it to yeah, me. Yeah, I didn't notice. I still oh, yeah. have one left at home, though, so I'll have to get back to you on it. Yeah, please um, do, because that was an... Inch I've never smelled... I've never... It was incredible. ...had a cigar that had that pungent of a barnyard yeah. smell to In it. a good way. I mean, yeah, it yeah, was incredible. Um, I was very excited for the cigar. Yeah. Have you smoked the Toro? I have. I bought five. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. There you go. Fiverr. Over to you, Tim. <laughs> All right. Uh, another tat on my list, the M80. Um, it's been a year since this was released. It seemed appropriate to uh, take it down the 4th of July. Um, what better way to celebrate the 4th? Um, thank you to Stogie Santa for hooking us up with these a while back. Yes. I, I have like one or two. Like I, I hide them in my humidor. Smoke them. Yeah, smoke really? them. Smoke okay. them. They, they're yeah, they're they, on a downward they are. They are. Yeah. I thought it performed just as well as it did a year ago. Razor shot burn. Perfect draw. Nice one-hour smoke. But I have to agree, Stogie Santa, I thought it was going a little flat. Yeah. It had a lot more flavor a year ago. A yeah. lot more. Um, smoke them if you got them. Still a good smoke. I said box worthy a year ago. Um I stay with that assessment, but I think if you have them, you probably want to take them down at this point. Right. That's a, and to add to that, the T110s, the, orig the original release from for Hawaii, okay. the same thing. Really? I mean, if you had them now, you still go, oh, my God, what are you well, talking about? Well, those are a few years old now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I That's one of my top five of what he's put out, in my humble opinion. The M80 surprised me because it's only a year old. Yeah. I wouldn't have expected that far of a mm -hmm. downward spiral that quick, but that's just me. But to put a little spin on that, I didn't have one when they originally came out, and I just had one on the 4th of July as well. Okay. So for the listeners that haven't tried one, don't be, don't listen to the talk like it's going really flat right. and, and exactly. be scared away from it because I had it, Great never point. had one in the beginning. And you enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah. I thought it was really, really good. So now, You had the T110. What do you think about that, Mark? It was a phenomenal cigar. It, One of the originals. Yes. Yeah, so Excellent. Santa hooked me up. Yeah, those were awesome. He gave me a, I had a, he gave had... me a handful of tats when I was at his house. <laughs> nice. He gave me that. You're working, that, you're working that new baby in your house again, aren't you? <laughs> Fuck, Junior. Nice. I got to get me another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, if you're listening, I'll be home at midnight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm driving in a new car. <laughs> Let's get it on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can you do that again? I yeah, like that. you like that, huh? <laughs> so uh, the next cigar that I had on my list, uh, I described as uh, straw, hay, 
damp cardboard in a tight draw. Can I can I guess at this? Pretty much what everyone else said. Now yes. those listening at home, you might be guessing like Paul had some bundle cigar. Oh, I'm sorry. Too. You know, maybe he picked up some grass from the yard and, and rolled it in some wrapper leaf and, and smoked it. Ooh, um, but no, I'm actually talking about the Avo Le 2012 Trompetta. That is not what I would consider a dog rocket. It was it was horrible. Oh, really? Actually, oh, I, I mean, I hate to say you like come just straight out and and say it like. It was horrible, I, bad. Yes, it's I, lawn, I, it got a rating of lawn mulch. I, I, I agree. Wow. I agree. Lawn mulch. I agree. Hundred. I, I got maybe through the first third, bad, yeah. like not a little past the first third, and I couldn't finish it. Mm-hmm. That's how bad it was. Now I have not smoked this because I had heard it was not good. Um, and the Avo seven... LE twenty eleven dude was like the tops of our list oh. last yeah, year. Yeah, it was my number one last yeah. year. Yeah, and the twenty twelve. I rated as lawn mulch. In the like, 20- how do you? How does that happen? Yeah. Now, how uh, Paul and I come at the same assessment. How could you release the cigar? That's how bad it was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and especially I mean, I mean, a company like Avo, you've got a high expectation. Yeah, well, and it's not an inexpensive smoke, $17, right? Yeah, I paid like 16 and, and up, change. Yeah. And up. Yeah. And you know, up. Uh, most places, you're looking at $20 and up. Yeah. Wow. Now, I smoked the 09, I smoked the 10, which I think was the Super Robusto. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 2011 was top of my list last year. They're all solid smokes, so yeah, it's surprising. That's what I was saying. Yes, sir. I'm like, uh, the ones I smoked are the same ones you have, and they were all awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, the 2011 stands out, but um, this was just... I, I had to try one for myself uh, just to make my own assessment, because uh, Cigar Aficionado and some of the blogs out there... Um, what did I say? A fifty percent flat tire was the yes. other the other blog. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that rated it. I mean, they all described the the damp or dry cardboard flavor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gym bag. <laughs> <laughs> I know what he's thinking. <laughs> What, why, why is Jim bag so funny to you guys? Oh, never mind. It's, it's a long story. It's a, it's a humidor joke. No. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, just a hint. Yeah. Well, I'm about a third into the drag. I, I, I'm going to a leathery taste to it. This is interesting. Bit. I didn't yeah. get that, but interesting. A little, just a tad, just a small tad. Yeah. You still getting that sweetness? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The sweet. The sweetness on this is. It's I don't remember, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I don't remember uh, the original Drac having that kind of sweetness, to be honest with you. It's I mean, nice, it though. Some, it is. It's smooth. Yeah, it's nice. It's smooth. Nice. That's why I'm talking about leathery, in my determinations, is, is that smooth taste. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it is. Now, my uh, minimum, the pepper definitely died down quickly, mm. and it moved into a nice, creamy spice. That's about all I'm getting off of it, but it's very enjoyable. Mm. I still, I, I think this cigar has a lot of potential aging wise. You feel um, that, I'd like to see it at Lodge Vitola come Halloween yeah. this year. So. Well, how about the Frank? Uh, it's, it's smoking awesome. It's yeah. just, it's amazing. The flavors are nice ash, by yeah, the way. Wow, it's, you sucked that down. It's really good. Wow. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stop myself from puffing on it. Now, do you see why I said, the, the, well, the original Frank that came out was my favorite one of. Oh, I can see why. Yeah, 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 I can see why. And Mark, what about yours? I finally got some of that spice that uh, Tim said would show up in this, um, but that leather stayed there. So it, yeah. yeah, see, exactly. It's uh, actually a very, very enjoyable smoke. Having smoked the face originally when it first came out, I think that definitely tastes like it. I think the age did the face wonders, mm-hmm. and I think it will do that wonders too. Um, yeah. But that's just my opinion. And, and uh, just to so. touch one thing. Now, if you were going to pick one of these, now, Tim, you're the only one here that smoked each and every one. If you were going to turn around and say A, B, or whatever it's one you want, which one do you think is going to age the best? Age the best. That's interesting. Um, I think the mum has a lot of potential. Really? But the Frank was definitely my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say how it's going to age. I'd mm-hmm. like to see it. Mm-hmm. I would love to buy a box of it and find I, out. Yeah. Um, I think the mum has a lot of aging potential, but I also think that it would do better in a larger Vitola. I think that maybe that might offer up a little bit more, mm-hmm. um, but just my opinion. What do I know? No, no, it's a no, it's a uh, good opinion yeah. at that. That's for sure. So next on my list, a Padron 1926 series number one in the Maduro yes. wrapper. Yes. <laughs> I see we have a lot wow. of fans. Uh, this was just an outstanding cigar. It, it didn't change too much. There's maybe some subtle changes in there, 
Um, I don't know. I was kind of drunk lighting up fireworks while I was smoking the final third. So we don't that's it. Forget about this. The only way to do it. Uh, review. <laughs> I was drunk. Couldn't you just come up with something like I was a little intoxicated? No. No. Well, it was, it was, yeah, it was the fourth. Yeah. You know. so anyway. I had some rum. I, I was pretty hammered that night, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you have fireworks, too? <laughs> no. So, okay. <laughs> the uh, the flavors and smoking Thank experience God. were top notch. I think that's what really attracts me to this cigar is the consistent, awesome flavors and the smoking experience. I mean, it holds your attention through the whole cigar. It finishes awesome. I just want to keep smoking them box worthy. Oh, absolutely. Right. And, and I, think, I think the, the key phrase that you mentioned is the consistency because I personally don't get when someone says, oh, it's very complex. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. It's just yeah, subtle it's little moves. I, I found when the ones were like three years, four years back, I got that nice, more of a cocoa blast in it, a typical drone, you yeah. know what I mean? So it, it's a great, great. And these things age oh, phenomenally yeah. well. Yes, they, 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 they smooth out and just they get very sweet. They smoke it out of the box, too. Oh, and they oh, do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they age six years, the tobacco. Yeah, already so, age, I mean, so. but good stuff. On to me. Go ahead. So this is one that Stogie Santa talked about the last show. Um, Paul, you gifted us. You think each one of us wanted? Yeah, these. and I have more information about it. So. Excellent. It's the Oliva Serie G Maduro Presidente. Um, oh. Was this nine inches by fifty-two? Is that correct? Uh, uh, I, will, around I will keep talking. I will bring it up. Uh, a really surprisingly smooth smoke. <laughs> now we determined it. tonight, Paul, it. before the show, this was two years old. This is uh, an eight by fifty-two. Eight. Um, it, I purchased them on July seventh of twenty ten, so about two years of my humidor, um, and I got a five pack. Anyone want to guess how much per stick? I won't say. I, I, I would say that uh, if you got that for like. Nine dollars a stick, that's a great price. Try three dollars a stick. I paid a whopping fifteen dollars that, for that, five of them. <laughs> and uh, there again, I, I, I'm telling you because first of all, the size of being eight inches, right? Yeah. And the way, you know, Series G's aren't usually that expensive, right? But right. It is what it is. Yep. But if someone's out there, and that's why I said, if you spent nine dollars for it, good for you. And getting right, you right. Got it, it would be worth better. that. I oh, mean, I would. In my opinion. Oh, I would. Um, Absolutely. I mean, first of all, this stick was sexy. I mean, wasn't it? Oh, Agreed. oh, dark, smooth wrapper. I mean, it was nice. dark, dark Maduro uh, wrapper. Yeah, yeah. It, it, very, very dark. Um, I got a nice balance of leather, some mild pepper or spice, mm -hmm. and I got some sort of fruit type sweetness off of it, but I couldn't quite place it. Um, great burn and draw. It held two inch ash for me. Copious amounts of smoke. I nubbed it. It took me over two oh, hours. It took, yep. Um, it never changed up flavor-wise for me. No. But that was all right. Yeah. I, I still enjoyed it. But you say it doesn't change up. Listen to the different things that you've got. You, I mean, you say, you know, it's, I caught myself saying the same thing you did. Yeah. But listen to the different nuances that you picked up. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's what I said to myself. Well, it's one-dimensional. But you say that, yeah. you got those, I got the same thing you got. I didn't get the, I didn't get the, the fruit part of it. And, um. Now, Mark Jr., did you smoke yours? Did I give you one of these, too? Yeah, you did. Uh, maybe a couple weeks before that, actually, you yeah. gave me one. Um, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it, too. Yeah. I was shocked. I can't believe I paid $3 a stick now, for those do you, bad boys. Do you have boys. any idea when that cigar was released? What year, Paul, by any chance? I don't, I don't know. know. Like I said, I, I mean, bought you're it saying in, two years in your humidor. God two, only knows how I old I bought that. it in 2010 on auction. So it so, could be, I mean, it could be a cut four years old. Yeah, exactly. It could be older than that, oh, yeah. That, that, I mean, that. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go on a boat and say this. I would. I buy a box of those with no problem. Yeah, yeah. I'd buy a box and sit on them. I, I, think I, I would sit on them. them. I smoke them. Yeah. I keep smoothness smoking. and the balance on it. You could tell it had, it had some age. Oh, I mean, I, I've had the Series G before, but never that much smoothness on it. Yeah, I mean, nah. that's why I bought them. I thought it'd be a different representation of, uh, of oh, that blend. Great call. So. Great call. Um, I uh, I tried to smoke a Camacho Liberty 2010 on oh, the shame. fourth. Yeah, I was really excited, and then I saw the beetle holes, which you can't see in the picture. Um, but then where the beetle holes were, about a third of the way in, or a little after, I could compress the stick down almost to like the size mm -hmm. of a piece of paper, and I knew that the beetles had eaten yeah. through a lot of the tobacco in there. Um, I I don't have beetles in any of the other sticks or anything else in the tray that it came from. Uh, and I think since this, I think it had beetles, and when I was trying to get rid of some mold, it's not you. It's in my humidor. I actually did the 
refrigerator, freezer, refrigerator, and yeah. I, I killed the beetles and then I put them back in, and this yeah. one had sustained the damage. Um, and unfortunately, it left it unsmokable. Right. I, I Which was a shame because the first few puffs of smoke, I was like, wow. You, well, know, you gifted me one a couple yeah, months you back. Did review it, on it, was, it. Yeah. it was the best liberty I've ever had, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of the other ones I have still have that like pasty little plume around yeah. the you know around the bands on them too. So. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm I saw the go face. Back. It was it was like uh, not a good that's one a, to look at. I was mad. I oh, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was a little yeah. disappointed to say the least. Yeah, um, but those are still uh, those are still available. Oh, I, oh, absolutely. I uh, strongly recommend that people What's get their the, hands uh, on some. retail net. That's going to be about fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, it's worth. Again, it, this is we're talking you know uh, our region and the New England area with the fifty cent tax. So yeah. if you're up higher, it is what it is. So speaking of the fourth. Yes. I ended my 12-day vacation with one of my favorites, the Liga Pavada T-52 Flying Pig. Um, been about eight or nine months since I've had one of these. I only have a few left. Um, Paul, you've ashed yourself again. Yeah, the, the cigar I smoked before the show um, actually was a, a Padilla Series 68, um, which was, it was okay. It was good. Uh, but it, a lot of the ash fell on my shirt. Mm. No burn holes, though? I think we ought to do the step out of the... The realm is get a Stokey Geek shirt with ash already on it. So yeah, you can't you tell go. the difference. And then we can have <laughs> it embroidered on the back. Yeah, I listen to Stokey Geeks. Just get a gray one. I ash need, that Stokey Geeks. Yeah. We need like a like a bib on the shirt or something to catch the ash that falls. Oh, <laughs> That's what we need. Nice. <laughs> so Flying Pig. It's been eight or nine months since I've had one of these. I don't have many left. I can report on all honestly, it is smoking even better now than it ever has. Incredible. Um, really? Still lots I have of great one left flavor. in my humidor. Um, I don't think it'd be a loss if you smoked it now. I don't know what it's going to do in the future. But I was a little surprised. I was getting a little scared because we all know that some ligas will age out. They'll go a little flat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but this one has not. Um, it's just something about the size. It's my favorite T52 for whatever reason. The Oasis, hands down. Oh. I would buy boxes of these if I could. Um, hmm. I just love them so nice. You Great. now you read this the Oasis, right? Is that what you said? Yes, it's that's awesome. And I've that's, said box worthy in the past. I'm saying the Oasis and now. And that's the only Oasis I feel that's on the T52 blend. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, the others are great, but they're not not like that. Yeah. I'll take T52 that. double Corona is really good, but mm-hmm. again, it's you know it, it falls for me like where you guys were putting that Oliva G President that you know it's like a great nice big long smoke, yeah. but. Someone stepping on a duck. Uh, my next cigar here is a Mark Jr. mystery cigar. This one came from Mark Jr.'s uh, humidor. We have no idea what this smoke is. That's a lot of plume on it. Or where it came from. Uh, other than that, uh, it was in your father-in-law's uh, humidor. Yeah, that's all I know about it. That's yeah. it. There was no indication. He was <laughs> really, really anal about labeling things, and that's kind of where I got it from, I think. But uh, there was no indication what it is. There's probably eight or nine of them left. What did you think? Uh, I thought it w- I thought it was good. Um, you know, it had some nice flavors. It burnt well. It was very enjoyable. I, I really enjoyed smoking it. I mean, it wasn't like out of this world. I mean, it's like a fiver. And it-, it was really good. No, Mark, you don't know what it is either? No, we oh, have no I'm idea. sorry. I, I, no. Said, oh, okay. I, think, no I think he's not, playing with us. <laughs> not, no, no, he did, we have no idea what it is. Not the faintest idea of really? what it is. It's, it doesn't have a band on it. It was just. Do you, say, really, do you think it really, was a uh, Habano? Or do you it, was, think? it was a Habano colored wrapper. It was a torpedo. It was maybe like a 6x52. Really, really nice wrapper on it. Too. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Like a kind of a really rustic. Nice it had this like nice. You see it in the picture. It's like kind of the coating of like plume. Maybe the beginnings of plume, I would say. It's kind of like a, the dust that some of the oil, sort of like initial oils yeah. kind of form on it. Um, it didn't taste like it was super aged. It still had a little bit of a, a punch to it, um, a little bit of spice maybe, um, but it was good. I was like, hey, you know, what do you, you know, Mark hands me, and I was like, you know what? Just enjoy it. Smoke it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, you know, I, I, it's, it it's kind it of fun to do that at, um, every once in a while, so... No preconceived notions and uh, no idea what the smoke was. Now, maybe it could have been something that, like, uh, someone had rolled or, like, uh, you, know, if you, you know, if you don't you visit a factory or someone visit. That's kind of what it felt like to me because it was in cellophane with no band on it. Right. Usually, like, an, uh, if something is unbanded, usually it doesn't come in. If they take time to put cellophane, they usually put a band on it. It's kind of weird. Strange. Yeah. Yeah. So this could have been, like, someone's blend that they did at a factory or something like that. I mean, I have no idea, but it's just kind of my guess. Interesting. The way it was packaged. It's all speculation at this point. Yeah. Now, you, have you smoked a Mach Jr.? Yeah, a few of them, actually, and it's always been enjoyable to me. That's why I, I was showing Paul my humidor, and I was like, oh, check these out. Yeah. You know, and he, here. 
Try one too, nice. I think. I think I need to see a humidor. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Come on over. <laughs> mm. All right. So I um, revisited something today, actually. I haven't spoken quite some time. Um, the Tatuare Black Petite Lancero. Um, I'm not sure why I don't smoke more of these. I think the price to size ratio kind of turns me off a bit. Um, it's a 6 by 38 Petite Lancero. Um, always offers up a smooth, medium bodied. You know, flavor profile that I really enjoy with a cup of coffee, um, which Stokey Santa was nice enough to hook me up with today to go with it. Um, the flavors are subtle. I, I can't quite describe them other than that they're enjoyable. Maybe it's a mild spice I'm picking up. Very mild. Yeah. Um, I can't really place any of the other flavors on it, though. Um, like I thought first, I thought it was getting like a sweetness, but it wasn't. You no. know what I mean? It, it, it's Maybe, I was, would you say bready? Doughy. Yeah, you know, same thing. We're, we're on the same thing. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I had the robusto, and I like this much better than the robusto on the black label. I agree. Uh, you know what I mean? And the tubo for that matter. Yeah. I've had the tubo. I, I had the black. I like the tubo better. Okay, I, I, I really do. We'll have to revisit it. I have a couple of those left, and um, I, I, I enjoy those. Yeah, I would They're agree nice with smoke. your assessment as well. I, uh, I smoked a black tubo, two day, the day, on the third, okay. and then I smoked a petite lancero today. Okay, as well this morning. And uh, I, I really, really enjoy the Petit Lancero. It's something yep. I always keep in my humidor. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, those, those two bows are... Would you say $8 and fantastic. change is a fair price? No, I agree with that. I, I, that's more of a six ninety nine type of... I was going to say 7 bucks. Yeah. I would probably have a box of these in my humidor if they were around 7 bucks. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the price just... Yeah, I mean, sometimes price will do that. Yep. It's, it's a size thing. It's yeah. It, it performs well. It's a great smoke. Um, size matters, my friend. Yeah, that's what my wife keeps telling me. Yeah. Yeah. So my uh, my uh, Frank uh, Junior here has uh, transitioned. I got through the first third. Um, very kind of like that, uh, a almost woodsy, very mellow flavor. It has transitioned into a, a much uh, richer espresso flavor. I'm mm. getting from it in the in the second third. It's definitely made a very noticeable. Uh, transition, yeah. very very enjoyable. I, I, yes. Mine, I've picked up spice now again on this. No pepper. The pepper is completely gone. I found that it's got a little stronger now, as opposed to the front and end. And the the drac on, right? on the, the little little, little drac. drac. Yep. Now I would say that that had a bready base to it. Would you say that? It's the sweetness that catches your attention. Yeah, that that's just, uh, throughout the whole cigar. That's the most enjoyable part. Yeah, of it. That, I gotta agree. Like I said, when I say spice, I'm not talking like. Uh, a big spicy LG or something like no, that, yeah. but it's, it's it's a subtle spice to it. And I got like I said, I find it a medium is going to a medium full right about now. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's not not knocking me out, but I just got like a good ash on it too, yeah. good inch and a half. So oh, yeah, you got a nice ash, do we, Santa? Hey, I smoked an Avo Heritage. I believe this to be the short robusto. I don't oh, think no, it was a full. There, there is a short robusto, robusto, and a Churchill. This was a short robusto. Um, I'd say, Matt, it's your average smoke. Nothing to write home about. It's got an impressive lineup of tobacco that they use to make it. So yes. the wrapper is an Ecuadorian uh, Cuban seed. The binder is a Dominican uh, San Vincent. Uh, the filler is three different Dominican Lajero. Dominican Seiko and Peruvian Seiko. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a very impressive line of tobacco. That's some high primings, and that's in there for a cigar yeah. at that, that price. And it's average <laughs> at best. I, know, I think but, the flavors but the price are, point, though, as opposed to you look at the signature, which is $11 a cigar. Yeah. yeah so the, you the, know what I mean? Yeah. I, What's I the think price I, point of the heritage? Uh, you're looking at about, say, six and a quarter for the. Really? I yeah. think they're close to yeah. 10. No, that's that's that's. Yeah, what I mean, at six and a quarter, I can see I can see, see some of these being. And yeah, again, yeah. We're, we're talking our price. I don't mean yeah. to be redundant, yeah. right? But I had the signature, and I just you know for that kind of money, I, it was in my humidor for a year, so it was it was smooth. There was definitely no harshness detected throughout. Mm -hmm. It was smooth and enjoyable. The flavors were just, I mean, they were just okay. Now I know people who absolutely love that cigar. I've smoked it. I agree with you. I think it's an enjoyable smoke. Yeah, nothing to really. Has run some home grassy about. hay notes with maybe some there underlying a, coffee. There is there. a touch of that avo grassiness. Oh, it's not over minimal. It's not overpowering, yeah, exactly. Not yep. But I work with some guys who absolutely love that smoke. That is a treat to them. Yeah. So there's people out there, my point being that, for whatever reason, that's their flavor profile, and they mm -hmm. absolutely love it. Um, oh, an avo, you got to like that that hay, grassy. Yeah, um, that's It's not prevalent, but it, it's got the, the undertone. It's there. It's there, yeah. Throughout the whole cigar. Yeah, have you ever smoked an avo domain? Oh, 
It's like never it's like you pulled the grass like uh, clippings out of your lawnmower and stuffed I, them I, in I your. I can't do yeah. it. Those uh, idiots were like that too. Mm. The is it the eightieth? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are insanely grassy. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Tim, I think it's your turn. Yes. So, um, big shout out to Peter. Listen to Peter who gifted me this. I finally got a chance to smoke the Crown Heads four kicks. Um, oh, I'm glad. Yeah, you know, after I'm glad all this time, yeah. Pete. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, mm-hmm. Pete. Uh, I gave you one last week. Oh. Yeah, I just said shout out to listen, Pete. Pete. Oh, hey, sorry. It's senior How much moment. How much have you had? Senior <laughs> moment. <laughs> I did say that. Senior right? senior. I'm sorry. Is it me or is it you? I'm it not sure. It is <laughs> me. Sorry, I didn't want to leave Peter out of it. That's all. Great guy. Thank you for your support, Pete. Mm. Um, so I liked it. it. Great solid smoke. Yes. Um, it sports an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler. A really enjoyable smoke. I wrote with flavors of wood, some mild spice, some natural tobacco sweetness. Performance was A plus. Um, I'd certainly revisit again. I say at least a fiver. Oh, all day. Fiver. You know, I read yeah. your description of this, and it's identical to mine. Is it? It's like this weird vortex where we're agreeing on some cigars recently. I was drunk is, the last episode, so I don't remember you. Yeah. So I didn't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the episode, or, or maybe the previous one that I talked about that. Yeah. But I had the same assessment. I, I thought it was solid. I, I definitely buy, you know, a five-pack more or whatever. You know, I, I don't know if they're necessarily box-worthy, but it's... Um, I wouldn't it's, go box. But it's, it's a solid, solid smoke. Five. Yeah. I would, I would yeah. smoke it on a regular basis. I think, it's particularly at lunch, I yeah. mean, this is the one I would enjoy lunch. Uh, speaking of ratings, we have introduced a new rating. So, uh, oh. yeah, you want drum roll, drum please. Roll. Uh, this is a, a two and a half. So this is in between the angler and the fiver, and a two and a half is try one. And, and Tim and I talked about. I'm like, you know, Tim, I wrote on my cigars this week, and I kept coming up with a couple of them, just saying, you know, I don't know if I'd buy five. I'm glad I tried one. But it's not like something that you wouldn't want to pay attention to, and it's not lawn mulch by any stretch. So mm-hmm. we came up with between a two and a three. It's a two and a half. It's called try one. Fair enough. So, you know, you go in the store and it's there. Call it the tweener. Yeah, you buy it. It's the in-betweener. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's uh, some dirty yeah. connotations yeah. there. Okay. Uh, I smoked a Camacho Liberty 2007. This is the one with the Barber Pole wrapper. Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting looking smoke. It's, uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, everyone that sees the smoke in my humor is like, what is that? Uh, the Barber Pole wrapper is... Uh, very exciting to look at. Um, this was a great smoke. I, it's not as good as I remember. I think some of the older Liberties, Stogie Sin, I think you detected oh. this too, they tend to age out a little bit. Yes. I think part of that is because it has some pre embargo tobacco in it, and that right. tobacco is really old, oh, so yeah. it's on the yeah, bottom end of the age. Yeah. 10, 15 years yeah. old. The flavors were nice. It was a change up or two. Um, like I said, it lost a little punch. Uh, this is a Figurado 1118 size, Corojo Broadleaf, uh, Barber Pole Wrapper, Honduran Binder. The filler is Honduran and the pre-embargo uh, tobacco. So, Okay. Very nice. I, I definitely enjoyed it from start to finish without question. I think we need a new chat room, Paul. Yeah, this chat room. Nobody's, nobody's logged in with an actual user account. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Anyway, um, production thanks. note, yeah, Ustream is, is great, but the chat room stinks. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for the support, guys. Um, so, Jay Grotto, Silk. This one is the Robusto, just released a few weeks ago. Um, smoking great. We had um, Paul Joyo on episode 19 talking about the smoke before it was released. Yeah, I do want to say we did break the news about the Jay Grotto Silk. Yes, we, we were did. first. Yes, we were. Damn it. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> um, to take some notes out of episode 19, sports an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. Binder is a dual binder Indonesian Criollo 98. Mm-hmm. And the filler is a Honduran Trojes Nicaraguan Joapa. I think this might be my new go-to with coffee in the AM. I, I'm leaning, I tell you, the Robusto. Yeah, it's rocking. It is rocking. Uh, of all the sizes I'm trying in that, in the, in that blend, yeah. Robusto is rocking. And it's become my go-to in the morning with coffee as well. It's not the only one I smoked this past week. I also smoked the prototype of the Lancero. Yes, you said that. Yeah, Which yeah, was yeah. damn good, but I'm liking the Robusto. Yeah, yeah. And I said box worthy. Hands down. I have nice. no doubt. I, so, yeah, I, well, I'll talk about it when I get to mine. Okay. But yeah. Fair enough. Um, I, uh, I I went into the local shop and I bought a, an Embos a, Embos Mundos Robusto, which is a hotel. Embos uh, Mundos uh, is a hotel in it Cuba. It means two worlds. Okay. 
But it's yeah. also a hotel in Cuba. In Cuba, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Um, now, do you, which one did you do? Do you remember? Was it Habano? It was or? the uh, the what the light, lighter Habano. band is the Habano. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Um, so this had about two years of age, you would say? Uh, that's a good assessment. Uh, yes. The cellophane was pretty yellow yeah. oh, on yeah. it. <laughs> um, this is a great stick. It was five fifty. Um, nice flavors. Bold and spicy on the mm. on the star. It get, really gets your attention in the oh, beginning. Oh, it grabs you. Great Tatawahe flavors. Uh, perfect stick for, you know, around the grill while jogging. And this is a, a, a true sense. Pete put this out as a budget smoke. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, I, I reference a source here where I got a, a quote from Pete Johnson uh, from CigarFan.net. Uh, and from there, they quote Pete as saying, this is a, a value-priced cigar that uses BNC-grade tobacco. In other words, the tobacco that was not used on the Tatawahe Premium brand, which uses A-grade. It's very good tobacco. It needs more time to be processed and more fermentation, uh, taking longer to get out all the impurities. The bales don't cost as much, so it's uh, a way to pass on the savings to the consumer. Mm-hmm. So this isn't a short filler. It's a BNC grade tobacco. I picked up a box on auction for two dollars and eighty cents a stick plus shipping. Nice. So about three bucks a done. stick uh, for a box of twenty five mm-hmm. of the Robusto in the Habano wrapper. Right. I'd say this is box worthy with that kind of price. Oh, Take yeah. it, put it in your humidor. And again, this is something I'm smoking around the pool while I'm grilling. And I like the Habano better than Sumatra personally. I mean, yeah, that's what that's properties. what people say. So I, I pulled the. I mean, at three bucks a stick, mm. like I said, I wanted something that I could smoke around the pool, and if it. You know, someone, my son squirts me with a water, water gun and gets wet. I, you know, no grab loss. another one. No yeah. loss. Yeah. So uh, it was, it was great smoke. I turn. And a good budget smoke. Mm. I think we talked about that in the last episode. It performs so. well. Tim, over to you. So speaking of the Jay Garrado Lancero prototype, I also smoked the Reserva Lancero. Mm-hmm. And while the silk was solid, the Reserva was a wow. Yes, that's the best one the whole line. Yeah, it's right up there with the Corona Gordo, yep. if not better. It's better. Uh, I can't wait for these to be released. I know they're going to be a limited release. Uh, very, yes, they're going to be very limited. Yeah, um, Watch for them. Because it's what's certainly box worth. What's interesting about the Corona Gorda is you smoke it, and it delivers such solid flavors throughout. You're like, wow, I wish that was a longer smoke. Yep. You get the Lancero, and you're like, wow. It's delivering those solid flavors. Right. I, I think I think even a little smoother. For mm-hmm. some reason, in that Lancero blend, it, it like smoothed it out mm-hmm. for me because yeah. I, I smoked one of these as well. I didn't put it in the uh, in the notes. So I saw yours and I figured mm-hmm. just talk about it. Um, but it smoothed it out for me and it delivers all that flavor in a much longer yep. cigar. Oh, so absolutely. I smoked them both back to back on July third by sitting next to my buddy's pool. Yeah, watching my kid play with his friends and um, nice. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, it's probably the most enjoyable part of my vacation. So nice. So uh, Stokey Santa, Mark Jr., is anything stick out in your mind that you've been smoking this week? Uh, believe it or not, the little Havana no, a six, the little uh, Petit Corona uh, for four seventy five. I love that stick. It, I, it's a um, the Petit Cazador. Mm-hmm. Everyone goes after that particular smoke yep. because it's a sexy little c- cigar itself. Which one was that? The uh, Havana number six. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's really, the red labeled. Uh, it's no label. It's a little little petite Corona. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And those are good. It, I, I love those. You don't get the spice you do on the on the on the, on the petite Cazadore, but a nice solid smoke. I really. It's talk about a go to smoke with a with a nice black cup of coffee. I enjoy. It's a great balance. It really nice. is. I mean, if a four seventy five, how can you go wrong? Yeah. Mark. Mark Jr. Yes. <clears throat> Actually, I've been revisiting some. Um, LFD uh, Limitado number threes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are phenomenal. It, I, I hadn't smoked one in a long time, and I kind of kind of slipped my mind a little bit. Yep. But it, it, it's it been, well, they're a few years old oh, now. They, four they, or five years old more, now, I think, something close, like that. More than, closer to five and six than yeah. three and four. Um, it was, it didn't have that upfront brutal LFD spice because of the age, obviously, mm-hmm. um, but the it had this phenomenal toasty, like um, very com- you know uh, complex. It's a big cigar, okay, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's I, I've been blown away. I've smoked three of them in the past week. <laughs> we have some, I have some of those at, at the shop. Yeah, and uh, in the back, I would try and get some because those are really really good right it, now. Which LFD is that again? Uh, Limitado number three. Number three. 
Limitado number three. three. Oh, they have the old one. Oh, they're, they're, they're good. They're really now, good. Now, what is the size? I would say it's a, a, a six by 52. Get okay. back to me in okay. a second. I'll look it up on my phone. Yes, yeah, so I uh, have smoked those. Those are good. And, yeah. and the other one, i, I, I got to get to me one of these sticks, is the uh, Phantom by Illusioni. And uh, Illusio, yeah. So, Tim, so you, were you, were, right you were right in the pronunciation. Of, I was, yeah. Yes. Someone was telling like, me. Wow. I think it was. <laughs> oh, I think it was Zed Man um, yeah. that was telling me. Uh, I and, and, recently started playing around the Google Plus, and yeah. I was chatting with some folks on there. And Great I, bunch of guys. They actually get together on Google Plus and have a hearth nice. via Google Plus uh, Hangout, yep. which is was really cool. Um, but he was telling me that when they went on their trip, uh, and someone else was telling me too, the, to Nicaragua, that. Uh, Don Giolito, is that? Yes, yes, yes. is that how you say it? Uh, Dion, right? right. Uh, was saying that it is Illusione. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and with the E, with the little thing under it, is e. the A sound. I pronounced something correctly. You did. Figure. Yes. You wow. did. Wow. And we doubted you. Yes. Well, I, Rightfully I'll so. see why. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. And so I'm sorry. Yeah, you were saying no, uh, the, 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 the Phantom. Phantom. Oh, yeah, the Phantom uh, Ellie is. Oh, it, it I haven't just, had the Phantom since it was released, and so. it's really well. We're going to yeah. take care of that real soon. I forgot that one to bring one over tonight. I, I that I got about six or seven of those left, and those are just smoking great. And they're going to be releasing two new different rappers coming up. This Ooh. this they'll be at the show. Will they? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're going to be at the show. Excellent. So I smoked a, a Davidoff Maduro tea. Uh, there is not much information about the cigar. In fact, if you go to Davidoff's website, none of their Maduro lines are listed there. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and my comments were, wow, just wow, what an awesome smoke. I mean, did you ever think you'd get like this rich, almost coffee flavor from a Davidoff? No. Yeah. The Maduro produces that. It's absolutely amazing. I definitely give one of these tries. It has that... I get a saltiness, like a salty flavor from the Davidoffs uh, in the first third, and this one had that very prominent salty flavor, so if you're into that, this is definitely the cigar for you. It's very tasty. It reminds me of the Colorado Claro specialty very much so. Nice. Um, I think some of the binders and fillers may be very similar uh, in that stick, but the wrapper is just, the Maduro wrapper is wonderful in this cigar. Um, I'd put it right up there with the Colorado Claro. As it's far hard as, to imagine it. A Davidoff with a Maduro wrapper. Yeah. yeah. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it is very... I bought one because I thought it was just really interesting. And again, I said the same thing about the Colorado Claro when I bought two boxes. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to get more. You know. It's definitely box-worthy, in my opinion. Now, these are around between 18 and $20 uh, a stick, so they're not cheap. It's a 6x48. It uh, has a Dominican uh, wrapper. Uh, Nicaraguan Habano binder, which is interesting. They use Nicaraguan tobacco from Davidoff, which I thought was interesting, and in, in Dominican in the in the filler. Um, I did find. Want to say that I found these online as well, so you can you can buy them online. They're not so easy to find. Not everyone carries them, and like I said, uh, there's not too much in the way of reviews. I know Ben from Nice Tide Ash. When I was googling for it, had some Twitter posts that he was smoking them. So he's definitely found this little. I think it's kind of a hidden gem because you don't often. Go to Davido for a Maduro wrapper, no, um, no. but uh, there's a robusto size, and then there's the this kind of Toro six by forty eight size. So, excellent, solid smoke. I can't wait to get more. You know what we forgot? What did we forget? To talk about what we've been drinking. Oh yeah, uh, I held it up for the camera earlier. Yes, you did. Uh, but Mark Junior, can you elaborate? Yeah, on? go right. ahead, Mark Junior. Go ahead. So it's Chieftain's uh, single malt cigar, uh, cigar malt. It's a fifteen year old space side. It is not released in the U.S. Interesting. Um, okay. It has that one has a U.K. tax stamp on it. Nice. Um, I got that through a buy uh, on the forum uh, cigar pass. They do a one of the European members does mm-hmm. like a uh, hooks hooks the U.S. members up with some nice. scotches and rums and stuff that we can't get here. It's fantastic, man. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. It it, it, it yeah. It's yeah. very nice. It's got a nice, subtle sweetness to it. It's uh, one of the better scotches I've had in a while. So Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. And I'm drinking Thank the you. UK Poland Spring. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> that means he's finished his glass of scotch. Right? That's he's right. good. That's right. so. One thing I will say, though, is the packaging on this thing was awesome. It is. With the box. Yeah, I held it up for the camera earlier. Yeah, it's got like a hole right up on the inside. It, it was aged in a sherry butt. I can um, see that, yeah. Yeah. Each bottle was numbered, mm-hmm. as you can see. Do right you remember here. the price of that particular bottle, Mark? Yeah, it was like 120 bucks. It was the it was the one that I splurged on last Christmas. Yeah. 
It's got a good bite to it. I like it. Uh, yeah, Tim, over it, it is overpowering my um, little monster a bit. But yes, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it, it is. It's 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 a little strong, but yeah, I'm okay for with cigars. It. So. But it's good. So the last on my list of the five little monsters. Do you want me to wait towards the end? Do you want me to stop? No, nah, do it now. All right, what fair enough, man. Uh, first, the little Frank or Frank Junior, I should say. Um, absolutely delicious. Five and five eighths by forty four, as we talked mm-hmm. about. Sports of Connecticut, broadleaf wrapper. Typical Pete Johnson broadleaf flavors, including cocoa, coffee. The ash wouldn't hold for me. It seems to be holding much better for you, Paul. Which is, uh, it's just waiting to fall on me yeah. is what it's doing. It's, it's scheming. It's messing with my head. Yeah, it's messing with you. Um, stick poured smoke. Burn, burn line was good. Draw was perfect. Probably my favorite out of the box. Um, hands down. There goes. There the it ash. goes. There it goes. Goodbye. Uh, I say box worthy. If I could buy a box of them, I would. I completely agree with your assessment. Right down on the flavors. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, like didn't I said, change I got, up for me as much as it did for you. I yeah, think. I got a very noticeable change from like a almost woodsy, woodsy type flavor yeah. to uh, uh, espresso uh, nice. coffee flavor. It's almost like a bitter uh, coffee. Like, so I call that espresso when it's yeah, more I do of a... Too. Yeah, it, It's not bitter in the negative connotation. Um, it's like you're enjoying a nice espresso after yeah. dinner, you know? Yeah, I really loved it. So you guys check it out if you haven't mm-hmm. smoked it yet. I don't think it's been, been my favorite so far. This is, I've only been through three of them, but yeah. that was spectacular. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. What do you I smoked call? a Padron Churchill Maduro. Uh, nice cocoa and coffee flavor. I mean, you talk about cocoa and coffee flavors... I mean, these sticks uh, pretty much define that for me. Uh, this one kind of had a hole in the middle. I smoked through it. Uh, and it kind of took away from the experience, but I'm really liking the regular Padron blend. Uh, as we stated before, I can get them at a, a, a good price and uh, something you can, uh, you know, if you're in the mood for that coffee and, and kind of cocoa flavors, it's a solid offering. I, I, I really, I, I'm lo- I mean, I've been a huge fan of the 26th and anniversary blends, uh, anniversary blends, um, but this... Two thousand, uh, the thousand series. Mm-hmm. I've just been, I've been smoking them. Uh, the ones I have in my humidor, they came in different. Uh, I bought a couple, and some came in some sample packs, and I've been smoking them, and they're just, they're awesome. They they're age awesome. very, very well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude. And the, do the six thousand also with a cup of coffee. I did the six thousand, oh, yeah. uh, the torpedo. It was yep. awesome. Yeah. So can't and, really go wrong with any of those. Nope. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I would say find your uh, size that you like the best, and maybe buy a box of those and age it. I think for some of your other sizes, you know, buy five uh, just to kind of try them out. Yeah. You really can't go wrong. I mean, I, this one did have a hole. I mean, it's a man-made product, whatever. For the most part, construction is really, really good for oh, the I'm price consistent. point that they're putting them out. It's very yeah. consistent. The flavor's always been consistent for me of all the ones that I've smoked. So, do you guys have a favorite? Size in that that line. What, in the I go back and forth on it, but well, yeah. on the regular, on yeah, in the regular, I, I, I like the six thousand. Yeah, I, I, I if you get a six thousand with like over three years oh. of age, it's a it's a magical experience. That's no, I like the favorite. Corona personally. That's a three thousand, I think. Right? No, no, that's no, that's, that, no, you're talking delicious. The delicious, the um, uh, laundress, laundress. Thank mm-hmm. you. That's one of my favorites. So I'm yep. bidding on a box of those on auction now. Buy it. The Laundress. Yeah. Very nice. If you want to sell a few, let me know. I will. Yeah, definitely. I'll share the, the savings. If because, I win, we'll see. Yeah, it's a great smoke. So. Yeah. They're not overly expensive. It, it's one of the budget smokes that I, I find myself, I lose myself in it. Yeah. And I can't say that about a it's lot of budget smoke. It's got that richness of coffee and cocoa. This yeah. just, it, it delivers that flavor profile very well every time. Every time I smoke one, I'm like, wow, this is a really great smoke cigar for the price. Like, mm. you know. Anyways, digress. Uh, little Drac, next one on my Little Monsters list. Um, I really like that sweetness. Mm-hmm. I called it a caramel sweetness, but I tend to call it a sweetness that I can't identify caramel every single mm-hmm. time, so I'm not sure that's what it is. Um, it's tough. I, I can, I, it is. I mean, saying it is not incorrect, but the sweetness, that that's the most prevalent part of the cigar itself. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Qualifying what the sweetness is, I find it to be very difficult. Mm. It can be. Me yeah. too, yeah. Mm. Um, I said it had a bready base. I did pick up a little bit of that spice too that you had, yeah, like, but it just it didn't last for me. No, um, there, there was the front part of the cigar. That was it. Yeah. and then maybe halfway down, I got a little little hints of it again. And it just disappeared. Yeah, it doesn't just, last. Like I said, I went from that. The, people may think it. Maybe it's just me. At the beginning of it had that black pepper spice, and I got a little. You almost get confused with the spice and the cinnamon. Almost like a. The best way, you know, the little fireballs that you would eat. Yep. Yeah. That little tingling on the on the tongue. That's yeah, it. Yeah. It wasn't. It, it was. It was really different. I, I. Again, I'm probably the only one. 
I don't know if anyone else can describe that as cinnamon, but I, I got it. It wasn't long. It was a yeah. in and out. I think it's my second. My point. wife says that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Pulls the long. Get right? out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> it wasn't long. Is that what you're saying? That both. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to say it's probably my it. second favorite out of the box. Um, and which one was that, Tim? Just the for little drack. The little drack. Yeah. Excellent. So I had a, a San Cristobal Elegancia Robusto. Now, I've smoked these in the past, and uh, they're very, very good. This one was unbalanced and a bit harsh and bitter. Really? And I'm finding there to be an inconsistency in this blend. Mm. Some of them smoke really well, and some of them just come out to be unbalanced. Um, I have a, a box I of recognize the... I have recommended the Churchills for somebody today playing I like the... I, I bought a whole box of the Churchills. Yeah. I mean, based on someone uh, went to an event. Uh, where they were l- releasing the Elegancia, gave me one from the event, and it was so awesome. I bought a whole box, but then now the box has been somewhat inconsistent. Um, they're relatively reasonably priced. I think we talked about that on the last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, it was over a uh, hundred degrees on my deck when I, when I smoked it uh, in the morning Could have with coffee. With so that, I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Um, the Robusta was a five by fifty Nicaraguan uh, filler and binder in the Ecuadorian Connecticut seed wrapper. Uh, made by my father cigars in uh, Estali for so, Ashton. That's for Ashton, Ashton product. correct. Mm-hmm. So. The baby face, baby uh, face, baby face. Not the not the artist. The not, cigar. Not the artist. Uh, I'm not a butterface. <laughs> we talked about, <laughs> about, about that. Yeah, but I don't know what I'm, I don't know. We won't go there. Um, Mark Jr. You're just smoking it. San Andreas Mexican wrapper. I don't remember the original. Um, stick having quite as much spices as this little guy, so I'm not sure if my memory's off and it's just the age of the original phase, or if it's the size, or the smaller size giving off a little more spice. It's got um, to be some of both, I would presume. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely remember a lot more leather on the original face, so I think you're dead on. I think that's a you thing. Would, would that, that make smoke? it the leather face? Isn't you that got what, it. Yeah, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ironic, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's at least a fiver. Um, maybe more if you intend to age it. I, I think it does have aging potential. But well, I'd say this. I mean, if you since you can only buy it in the box, it's certainly not one that you're disappointed that it's in the box. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's a good so far out of the three that I've smoked it. Keeps up with the other ones, and it's uh, also a very good smoke. So. Absolutely. I smoked an Opus X Forbidden X Lancero from 2009. This was an awesome smoke, great burn construction, had that Opus leather spice pepper up front, smoothed out into a nice sweetness uh, and a great finish to boot. I would say these are box worthy, though you cannot purchase a box that I know of of these. You'd be hard; it'd be difficult to uh, buy a box of them. Although you can get them in the uh, Cigar Family Charity Foundation box, um, such as the one from two thousand nine. Great offering from that uh, from nice. that box. I, I find that you know I've had mixed success with some of the smokes from that box from two thousand nine. Um, enough success that I did buy one from two thousand ten. Um, which I haven't touched yet. I'm going to smoke or buy or sell or trade my way through the 2009 box. Fair Lately, enough. I've just been smoking them. Like on a Friday night, if we're not doing an episode and I'm out here coming out to just to enjoy a smoke or work or whatever, um, I, I'm going to reach for that uh, smokes in that box because um, they're all strong still, even with three years of age on them. Yep. Uh, they still pack a good punch. And, um, you know, the, some of them are not as good as the other ones, but... They're all very enjoyable, and it's they're part all, of the fun. They're all fun to smoke because yeah. the sizes are all different. Um, some of them you get one of the size, you get two of the. It's just it's a fun, expensive fun experience to go through a box of the uh, the CFCF. It's an expensive hobby, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'd say if you can, uh, you can crank the temperature down in the AC unit. If, yeah, it's uh, hot in here. If man. it's getting warm in here, yeah, I'm, I'm crank it, crank it all the way down. Make it cold. Uh, while Tim does that, I'll talk about my next one, uh, which is. If I had to pick one of the week that was my Stogie of the week, this would be it. Okay. Davidoff Anniversario number one. This one comes in a gigantic wooden tube. I want to say yeah, it's, a, it's a wooden tube. It's ah, I don't know, it's an 8 by 48 or something like that. Um, Sounds expensive. Someone from, I believe it was Cigar Pass. No, Puff.com from the Puff.com forum summed it up nicely. He says... There are some cigars that cease being a smoke and turn into a vent. 
this is one of those cigars. This was truly a two and a half hour event, and it was magical for me. Outstanding burn construction, all kinds of subtle flavors that just came and went with this cigar. You know, wood, sweetness, hints of fruit. It just kept going on and on. I wish I took a picture. I mean, I nubbed it. It was out like nice. nothing, like maybe a half an inch or less that's of a, this cigar That's a left. big Al nub, as yeah. I said earlier. And for that large yeah. of a stick, and being a Davidoff, mind you, whose finish on their cigars tends to be a little uh, flaky at best. This was just awesome. It's box worthy. It's like between twenty eight and thirty or thirty and thirty six dollars uh, a cigar for this. They come in. Would boxes. you say maybe the Oasis? Um, it's borderline Oasis. I put uh, box worthy. Um, it's 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 pretty close to Oasis though. Um, I think the price somewhat held me back. It yeah, didn't, it didn't so. quite live up to. Uh, the price point on it. That's a hefty price. Now, yeah, so. if it was between twenty and twenty five dollars, it may have gone definitely Oasis status, and that's I'd just be buying them. Um, but I mean, that you know, you pay as much as thirty six dollars. That's a lot. That's a lot um, right? for one cigar. So um, it's a Dominican uh, filler binder, and the wrapper is a USA, I believe, Connecticut. Uh, is what the wrapper is, is what I've uh, I've read. There's not a lot of information about this online. Okay. Um, so those are two for you, Tim. We talked about earlier yep. uh, the da Maduro T and the anniversario number one. Not a lot of information about there. Two phenomenal smokes. Excellent. Phenomenal smokes. Uh, the Wolfie. Um, probably my least favorite out of the box, to be honest. It wasn't a bad smoke. Uh, let me just say that. Uh, it's a five and a half by 48. Sports an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Um, not great, but not bad either. Just... Blah. Um, it bored me. Um, something I would smoke around the yard. I detected some oak, some mild pepper. Performance was good, but overall, definitely boring. Um, I say 2.5. Try one. See what you think for yourself. I mean, some people out there are saying they love it, and to each his own. Yeah. Nice. I had an uh, Arturo Fuente Añejo Corona. I'll keep this one short. It was a great smoke. I still like the shark way mo better. Uh, I'd call this one a fiver. Now, I have that in my travel humidor right now, sitting next to me, and I do need to smoke it next show. It's, it's very good. It's yeah. very good. I mean, likely box-worthy for many, um, but I think if you're going to go after the Añejo line, I just have a much better smoking experience all around with the Shark, the shark um, yeah. uh, out of all the Añejos. And I, I do have the other sizes, and I will smoke them and report back. Um, They're all good. The Corona, the Corona was solid, but you know the Shark really stands out for me in that, uh, in that blend. Fair so. enough. So the last one on my list is the Mini Mum, which I'm smoking now. Um, five and three quarter by 42. Sports a Nicaraguan sun-grown Criollo wrapper. I think it might be... I don't know. I, I, I said here my favorite, but no, the Frank is definitely my favorite. I think it has the most aging potential, like I said earlier. I have a nice blend of cedar, spice, and a lot of creaminess, which I've been getting on the second half right now. I, again, I wish I could buy a box. Um, but again, that's the mocking genius of uh, Mr. Johnson. So take it for what it's worth. Try it. I think that you can't go wrong with a box of Little Monsters. You're not going to be disappointed. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, honestly, two boxes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I did. And I tell you, the, the uh, little the Frank Jr. that I'm uh, smoking now is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it can, I'd love to have a cup of coffee with this uh, cigar to kind of tease our next segment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything right. left on your list? Bob? I got, I think, uh, quite a few. It's tough to see how many I have uh, left on my list. I was slacking. I was on vacation, so. No worries. Uh, Cusano 10th anniversary. Uh, this was a good cigar. I'd smoke it again. Nice flavors in the first two thirds. Really nice, in fact. However, uh, many report a, a pepper flavor. Uh, they get a lot mm-hmm. of pepper from this cigar. Mm-hmm. And in the final third, for me, it was an unmistakable charred meat. So here's what I wrote. I mean, I really thought someone was taking a torch to a cow outside of Studio B and venting the smoke directly into my mouth. I mean, that's how prominent of a charred meat flavor I got from the cigar. Interesting. Uh, yeah. It's an Ecuadorian uh, wrapper with a Dominican Honduran um, and U.S. filler, and the binder is Mexico. So, uh, kind of a... That came from Puff.com, kind of a, a mix of... Uh, 
uh, tobacco in that smoke. Uh, again, very good. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd buy a few more. Uh, my rating on this was a fiver. Uh, the charred meat was almost too much charred meat for me. It was a little too much of that. So, I did a La Fontana Vintage Galileo Robusto. Uh, the flavors were to me were very muted and boring. I know a lot of people talk about this as a good budget cigar. Mm-hmm. There's an artificial sweetness, and I think Ben talked about the, the way they apply the cap. The cap they right. use the, the glue that has a little yeah, bit of sugar in it close, yeah. uh, to get that little bit of sweetness. I mean, that for me... Earned an angler, uh, a raider of an angler, angler. Uh, you angler know, or angler, angler, anger. Right. Uh, it was a, it was an angry angler uh, rating on this <laughs> cigar because <laughs> uh, it was kind of boring. The sweetness does, although artificial, kind of help hold your attention. So, therefore, the angler, uh, Connecticut wrapper, Honduran uh, filler, uh, and it was very much a mild cigar. We talked about the Jay Grotto series Silk a little bit. I did the Churchill size. Very good. I still like the Robusto. Uh, kind of waiting to smoke a few more before I pass my judgment. I believe the Robusto is going to earn the Boxworthy uh, rating on there. Padron Family Reserve 85th Maduro. Mm-hmm. Has anyone smoked the 85th recently? No. Not recently. Not no. recently, no. I had a couple before, and I was not I was not really this, blown away. This is a powerful lit of cigar. And I'm not mm-hmm. talking about just nicotine. I mean body and flavor. Oh. It is bold. Uh, I, I think they take that tobacco in that smaller size, and they just come up with a bold, bold flavor. Very enjoyable, flavorful, satisfying, delicious um, box worthy, in my opinion. Uh, Jessica Padron is quoted as saying the 85th was released to commemorate my grandfather's 85th birthday. Uh, Jose Padron founded Padron Cigars on September 8th, 1964. Um, they recently had celebrated their 47th year in business. Uh, I, I, I love the cigar. I, I think it's box worthy. Um, mm-hmm. I smoked another Añejo Shark. We kind of talked about this on the before Stogie Santa. I like the 2010 and 2011 releases of the Anejo Shark. I couldn't detect any difference. Mm-hmm. Same experience for me. Wonderful flavors, impeccable burn and construction. I only had to ash it twice. I mean, that's how, wow. that's how well it held the ash. Both of them, I only had to ash twice. Wow. And I smoked one from 2010 and one from 2011. Same experience. Stogie Santa, we were talking about this next one uh, in the shop recently. Cusano Corojo Vintage 1997 Torpedo. Yeah, what is mm. this? I've never heard of this. These are still available. Now, the one that I had came from a gift set. That's correct. And it might have been sitting around for a while. Oh, I'm have the, that's, some... that's all of five years old. Mm. Okay, so that would explain my experience as uh, being uh, box worthy for this oh. cigar <laughs> because it was very good. I you really said these love... are still lying around. What? Uh, no, those gift sets those are, are go- long, long gone, gone, long gone. You can still buy the uh, this particular Vitola in the same size and okay. you know all the same tobacco. It's smooth, subtle spice, medium body. I love smoking these midday. Um, they touted them as full bodied, which made me think that either they were overstating themselves or could it was be just age. because of the age. Yeah. The uh, age probably a combination of both because yeah. I could never see this being a really bold. Uh, so it's a nice palate refresher. It's very different. Um, yeah, nice, nice spices on it. Very good yeah, spices. Yeah, uh, Ecuadorian Corojo um, wrapper, the Mexican binder, and uh, I'm not sure what the filler is. Um, so it's about five dollars a stick. So it's uh, not an overly expensive cigar not at all. Very good with age, certainly. I agree. Uh, I think I just have a couple more left. Grand Habano SDK Zulu Zulu Ecuadorian Connecticut. This is that uh, the red, white, and blue. Uh, very uh, awesome artwork on this one. I reviewed um, this actually for the site a while yeah, back. Okay, a, if you reviewed it, it wasn't it wasn't a terrible Connecticut. It wasn't uh, no. mind blowing yeah, no, either. No. It was kind of just meh. Uh, I would say try one or or actually I give it the angler. Sorry, it I gave it the fiver, but now that we have the try one. I would probably modify it to say try one. Um, It was a little bit hit or miss for me. I enjoyed the first half of it, the second half of it. I I didn't like the the second. Do you find it getting bitter? Yeah. Yeah. The second Mm -hmm. half it got bitter, went a little south. Mm -hmm. Emilio AF2. uh, was it good? Yeah, was it great? No. I, I, a lot of people in the cigar community really, really rave. rave about this I think cigar. Ben, ben loved that. And I, I, it's a solid offering. It just it, The flavors aren't as balanced as I like them to be, uh, not as enjoyable as I'd like them to be. Uh, so, I, I mean, I gave it a fiver. I, I think it deserves a rating of a fiver. Um, because you probably want to try more than one, mm-hmm. um, just to make sure it might fit your flavor profile. I think it's a very specific flavor profile. Uh, there. Yeah, yeah. Either you I like agree. it or you don't. And yeah, and I just, you know, I'm probably in the minority. I just, 
I think giving him the angler is the highest I can give that. Yeah, I mean, I but would yet, agree. I mean, go. It's. I, I enjoyed the F one more. Oh, oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But uh, last one on my list. I just keep smoking these because they're just so damn good. This is the Viaje Skull and Bones Moab from March of 2011. Just unbelievable. I can't keep my hands off them. They continue to be the perfect nighttime smoke. After dinner, your last smoke of the day. Full body, spice, pepper, construction is there. Nicaraguan uh, sun-grown wrapper. Uh, the uh, Nicaraguan binder and Nicaraguan filler. Four and a quarter inches by 54. It's a petite pyramid. Uh, the MSRP was nine dollars and thirty six cents for these. Why on the Viaje kick? Did anyone do the the, the two thousand uh, twelve uh, TNT yet? Is that no, I have not. I I I, I really struggled with that particular cigar. I, I struggled with the twenty eleven to be honest. I haven't and spent any money. It was funny. It. Paul and I revisited the well, I'm not at the same time the twenty eleven, and it you know it didn't do anything for it. And I was just really. I'll tell you what, I just don't get it. I just don't know how... 2012, oh, well, the 2011 TNT, even after a year, didn't do much no, for me. No, I remember exactly. the 2011 opening well. Mm-hmm. But I remember you gave me one, Stogie Santa, from the original TNT. <laughs> yeah. and it was, oh, that original it was TNT. Oh, awesome. I mean, it was yes. awesome. Yep. Yeah. And the uh, subsequent releases and, have not been awesome. And I'm looking at the C4. I, 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 I C4 is good. I like the C4 better than the newer TNTs. Yeah. Um, they smoothed out a little with age, but little, they're kind of flat. Very I just, flat. I would, flat is uh, yeah, the word. Yeah. yeah. And that's just about pushing the angler at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So that rounds out our Stogies of the Week. That was uh, quite the impressive list, gentlemen. So uh, with that, we're going to take a short break here on the Stogie Geek Show. Come back and talk about cigars that we like there to we smoke with coffee. 